Hello grade 12, this is JP again. So we're now going to find out how to find the equation of a cubic graph. These, so when you think of cubic graphs, I want you to, to think of those three graphs. The black and the, the red cubic graphs are like your, like your default cubic graphs. Um, they're beautiful, they've got two stationary points, they've got a nice point of inflection halfway between the two stationary points. And um, so, of course, the black graph has got where A is positive, the leading coefficient um, um, ex the, lead, yeah, the, the leading coefficient is positive, and the red graph is when that leading coefficient is, is negative. You know, the coefficient of x cubed is negative. And then we've got this green one, kind of lets you think of a tan graph, eh? like a funky. And uh, that happens when the, the point of inflection is actually a stationary point. So it's quite a unique one. It just goes like, you know, just in, in the other direction. So these three equations, that's very really useful. The first one um, is, is very, it's a bit boring, but it's, it's very basic. So y is equal to a x minus x1, x minus x2, x minus x3, where x1, x2, x3, they are all the x-intercepts, right? So that's when, you, when, you, when you've got the x-intercepts of a graph. So that's quite easy. You just chuck x1, x2, and x3 into there. And, of course, then you need another point. Um, so if you've got a cubic like this, so there's like x1, there's x2. Of course, the order doesn't matter. Please don't be silly about that. x1, x2, x3. And then you just need any other point, right? Not an x-intercept, any other point than x-intercept. So, for example, this point here, x and y, and you move x into x, and you in all the x's, of course, and y into, into the y to find a of course, because there's an infinite number of graphs, of course, that can go through x1, x2, and x3. I mean, that graph could have also have been much higher, right, like that. Well, of course, the graph could have been, if a was negative, then it also still goes through the same x value. So that's quite important when a makes a big difference. Then, um, then there's also very cool cubic graphs. You've actually seen these before. When when it actually turns, when one of the turning points is on the x-axis. So something like that. So like a ching, it turns on the x-axis, and uh, so what happens is you've got x one here, but then you've actually got two x values. There's it's x two and it is x three, right? I mean they are they are both there. So um. I know that's a bit weird, but uh, um, so in other words, what you what you've got is you need, just need to substitute the x value, so there's that one, and then if it's if it's the if the x value, x intercept is a turning point, you just square that one. Do you follow? You just square that one. That's not very really difficult. Again, okay, just so uh, just so it corresponds with that graph, so that will be x minus x two all square times by x minus x one. Okay, and then one of the these funky green graphs when um, the the point of inflection um, is a, is actually a stationary point, so it just it just takes a while to turn, um, like some of you do. So um, then yeah, so then we use this, and oh, that looks so familiar. It almost looks like the parabola, right? A, a, a x minus b all square plus q, but this is now just a cube. So. Um, yeah, so it's quite quite special, and of course, P and Q is just the coordinates of the turning point. You'll notice your textbook will write it y is equal to a x plus by b or q plus q, and then it it does that, and then for some reason they just say that's minus p and q. You get to the same answer, but this is just oh, that's against my religion. I can't do that. I'm so sorry. So let's look at this example. This is example 28 on page 115 in your textbooks. So these, um, this is just the default one. So you've got three turning points, uh, three x-intercepts, minus one, two, and three. So all's well. So it's y is equal to a x minus x1, x minus x2, and x minus x3. Right? So remember what, what, to, what we need for this one is we need the, the three x-intercepts and then we need any other point, okay? So, and we have another point there. It's the point 1 and 12. We don't know anything about that point 1 or 12. Um, so here we go. Let's substitute each of these um, x values in. So y is equal to a x minus, so let's make you red. So it's x minus minus 1, yeah? 
and then x minus x2, let's make this one the green one, so x minus 2, and then x minus, and let's make this yellow, so there's 3, and there we go. Right, so what we've got is we've got y is equal to a, x plus by 1, x minus 2, and x minus 3. Okay, so Claire's going to um, present a lesson later on how to find the x-intercepts of the graph, but I think this is useful actually just to see what actually happens before. Okay, and then we just need to substitute the point in. We've got this point 1 and 12, so x is 1, and then y is 12, so therefore 12 um, then is equal to a, and then x is equal to 1, and then plus 1, and we've got 1 minus 2, and we've got 1, and we've got minus 3. That's not too bad, eh? So then 12 is equal to a, so that's 2, that's minus 1, that is going to be minus 2. So what is that equal to? So it looks like um, so 4a is equal to is equal to 12a is equal to 3. And the, the graph is positive. Remember, if the leading coefficient, if a is positive, it starts down and it ends high, right? If it's um, if a is negative, it starts high and it ends down, right? So, so let's look at the at, at example 28b. This is also in your textbooks. So this is one of those scenarios when when one of the x-intercepts is a is a turning point, and um, and they are actually quite easy. So it is just y is equal to a x minus x one, x minus x two, x minus x three. Um, but now remember that this one is going to have two two x values, right? So it's because that x intercepts a turning point, it will take two places. So in other words, if you're just going to rewrite this as y is equal to a, so it's x minus minus two is x plus by two square, and then x minus one. Hope that makes sense. So it's x minus minus 2 and x minus minus 2. Okay, so that's x plus by 2 all square. Okay, and then what you just do is you move this minus 3, 4 into there. So x into x, y into y. So 4 um, is equal to a. And then uh, minus 3 plus by 2 square. And then we've got, uh, what is that again? Minus 3, minus 3 minus 1, and what we've got is we've got 4, so it's a, what is that equal to? So that's 1 times by minus 4, therefore a is going to equal to minus 1. Is that right? Yeah, so therefore what is the equation going to be? Therefore the equation is y is equal to minus 1, x plus by 2 squared, x minus 1. And then, oh, it's just a bit irritating, sometimes they ask you to write it in the form like y is equal to ax cubed plus bx squared plus by cx plus by d. And what that just means is you just need to multiply it all out. So you've got y is equal to minus 1, x squared plus 4x plus by 4 times by x minus 1. And then you just need to multiply, you know, that one to every one, that one to every one, and then multiply minus one. And then you're going to get something like y is equal to minus x cubed minus 3x squared plus by 4. Okay. So, um, but if they don't ask you that, you, it's totally fine to leave it into that form. Okay, so the next example is example 29 on page 115, and this is one of those, those Windgat um, cubics where the stationary point is actually is, um, uh, the point of inflection. So what we've got in this example is the point of inflection was given and the y-intercept of minus 3 was given. So... Um, I would I would use the formula. I mean, you, you can really use that formula the textbook gives you, the x plus by p cube. Um, I'll really try not to judge you, but that's difficult. But um, I would I would just go a x minus b or cube um, plus q like before. Is you know we've treated like x minus b and plus q for for those um, parabolas if you remember. And um, and what 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 happens now is we've got minus one minus two the point of inflection. So in other words, that is b and q. So well, let's make Q green. Um, and yeah, and then we've got the another point there. We've got the point uh, 0 minus 3. Okay, and that's, of course, that's going to go into X. That's going to go into Y. B is going to go into B. Q is going to go into Q. 
all is well and we can solve for a. So, in other words, what do we have there? We've got minus 3 goes into y, a, what goes into x there? It looks like 0. And what, what is p's value? Minus 1, then cube, and then plus by q, so plus by minus 2. And what do we have there? We've got 0 minus minus 1 is 1, 1 cubed minus 2. So a minus 2 is equal to minus 3. Therefore, um, therefore it looks like a is going to equal to minus 1. So therefore, that equation is y is equal to, remember it's a x minus p or cube plus by q. So it's y is equal to minus 1 x minus minus 1. So it's x plus by 1 cube. Um, minus 2. Right. And the last example is then example 30 on page 116. Now, these are probably the most important ones. Um, so what, what's been given to you is some, they will give you the um, uh, an equation in some form. Uh, go away. And uh, so there's like ax cubed plus bx squared minus 12x. So actually it should be plus d and d is 0. So actually this should type of this should turn it the I thought we'll go through the origin. And uh, and what they told you there that uh, minus two twenty is a stationary point of f. Ooh, stationary point. There's so much in this. So um and then you need to find like A and B. Now these are very common questions. Um and what it means is you're going to solve them simultaneously. If you need two coefficients, simultaneous equations, that's it. Okay, so let's look at there's so much information. It's actually it's actually so cool. I mean, this the, the only thing they told you is, well, there's an incomplete equation, and then there's a stationary point. That's the only thing they give you. But but sometimes we forget that a stationary point. Well, we 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 know how to find a stationary point. So there's that element. But a stationary point is also just a point on a curve. Remember, these are functions. If you substitute a, the stationary point x into x, y into y, you can set up an equation. Okay. So our point. Um. You know. So it's, oh, the the. What we want to achieve here is we need to find two equations. We want to set up two equations with the two pieces of information we've got. Okay, so the first piece of information is that the stationary point is um, minus 2 and 20, right? The stationary point is minus 2 and 20. The other information we've got is that minus 2, 20 is a point on the graph, is a point on the graph on curve, um, on the graph. Okay, so here we go. So we're going to set up two equations for those pieces of information. Okay, the first thing. How would we normally find a stationary point? Yes, you're right. We would find the derivative and then equal it to zero. And then that will give us the x value, right, of the point of the stationary point. So we would normally have f of x is equal to blah, 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 blah. And then we find the derivative, right, and then blah, 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 blah whatever that is, and then we say, well, the derivative is equal to 0, blah, 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 is equal to 0, and we solve for x, and sometimes there's two, one more than one x. Okay, but now the thing is, we've got the x value. We know the x value is minus 2. We know what the answer is, all right? So in other words, if we finding, find the derivative of the function there, right, so it's ax cubed plus bx squared minus 12, that is going to be 3ax squared plus 2bx minus 12, okay? What do I do now? Yeah, so if I substitute 2 now, mach minus 2, into the into the x value, right? That would mean so 3a minus 2 squared plus 2b minus 2 minus 12. That answer is supposed to be equal to 0. Remember, if I let the derivative equal to 0, I find the x value. Well, I have the x value, so if the derivative at that x value is 0, I can find, you know, if you, you can set up an equation. So then, therefore, that is equal to minus 2 squares 4, so that's 12a minus 4b minus 12. Okay, and what we've got then is we've got, um, and just set up nicely, it looks like each term can be divided by 4, so 0 is equal to 3a minus b minus Three, in other words, b is equal to three a minus three. Ooh la la! So we've got one equation set up. The second equation, this one is much easier because so we know the function is f of x 
ax cubed plus bx squared minus 12x. So what we're going to do is we're going to substitute the point minus 2, of course, into x and 20 into y. Okay, another way to say that, of course, is f of minus 2 is 20. Like, like we said in this case, the derivative at minus 2 is 0. That means minus 2 is a turning point. Here, it's just when x is minus 2, y is 20. So we don't, we're not finding the derivative, we're just substituting um, minus 2 into x. So f of minus 2 is equal to a minus 2 cubed plus b minus 2 squared minus 12 minus 2. And what is that equal to? Minus 2 cubed is minus 8, so it's minus 8a plus 4b plus 24. And what is f of minus 2? Well, it's equal to 20. So 20 is equal to minus 8a plus by 4b plus by 24. So in other words, can we simplify this a bit? Looks like it. Minus 8a plus by 4b minus 20 on both sides plus 4 is equal to 0. I think each term can be divided by 4. So then minus 2a plus by b plus by 1. All right. So that's quite cool. So in other words, 2a is equal to b plus by 1, if you want. And then the last part is just we need to solve these simultaneously. Um, so I would just say, for example, this is equation 1, and that's equation 2. I would substitute equation 1 into 2. In other words, the value of b into that one's b, right? So in other words, write down equation 2. 2a is equal to b plus by 1. So in other words, 2a is equal to, and what is what is b equal to? 3a minus 3 plus by 1. So 2a is equal to 3a minus 2. So a is therefore equal to 2. Yay! And then substitute a, of course, back into any of those to find b. So b is equal to 3a minus 3. b is equal to 3 times by 2 minus 3, which is equal to 6 minus 3, which is equal to 3. So therefore a is equal to 2 and b is equal to 3. Hope this is helpful for you. Helpful to you.